Welcome to the Champion of the Gospel broadcast. It's a joy to have you tuning into the preaching and teaching of God's Word. Invite your friends and loved ones to watch and listen as well. Our desire and goal is to proclaim the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that Jesus loves you. In fact, this is the greatest news in the entire world, that Jesus saves, heals, delivers, baptizes in the Holy Spirit, and is coming again. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ is the only answer and solution for sin. Our awesome calling and solemn responsibility is to minister the pure gospel and sound biblical doctrine. We need to stand up for Jesus and lift high the banner of the cross. Please pray for this ministry that will champion the gospel of Jesus Christ under the anointing of the Holy Spirit view our multimedia programs often tell others about our online resources and services together thank you for being a part in fulfilling the Great Commission the focus of this message is based on Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 if we can entitle this message, it is the Messiah who was, is, and is to come. The Messiah who was, is, and is to come. Before we look specifically at this chapter proper, we want to briefly highlight the background and nature of the book of Isaiah. The messages in this book has multiple applications. Firstly, the prophet Isaiah addressed God's word to the people of his day in the kingdom of Judah and the nearby countries. Secondly, he prophesied the first advent of the Messiah. And thirdly, there are also passages that speaks of the second coming of the Lord. With this understanding, there are prophecies in the book of Isaiah that have been fulfilled. Yet there are other parts that will be fully realized in the last days. As a person, he was full of conviction and yet full of compassion. He was a bold and uncompromising prophet. Jesus himself in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 referred to the words of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 when he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me we need the Spirit of the Lord in our life and ministry as we follow our Master let's look to the Lord in prayer Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus as we come before you to receive your word I'm asking for the power and the presence and anointing of the Holy Spirit Father, I pray that today we receive a fresh impartation of your Holy Spirit to guide us, teach us into the truths of your word. We ask this in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now let's begin with verse 1. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, save your God. The people of God have struggled with the Assyrians and would later face captivity in Babylon. Even during such times of afflictions, God's comfort, deliverance, and restoration would eventually come. Now verse 2, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Years later, after the Babylonian captivity, and the warfare is over, God pardoned His people of their sins. Likewise, you and I were also slaves to sin, held in bondage. The Lord Jesus Christ took our place and paid sin's price on the cross, and we received the double. Our God is a God who restores more than what we've lost. His grace is greater than our disgrace. We are justified and sanctified, saved and delivered, from the penalty of sin. The enemy of our soul steals, kills, and destroys. Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. Verse 3 The voice of him that cry in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
This is a prophecy about John the Baptist in preparing the way for the first advent of the Messiah. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse 1, we read, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. As John the Baptist was a voice at the first coming of the Lord, there will be another fulfillment when Elijah will become the voice before the second coming of the Lord. Let's look at Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The desert in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 represents the world. The world needs the highway of God, the way of holiness. Now verse 5, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. At the second coming of the Lord, all people in the world will see His glory. Next, I'll read verses 6 to 8 all at once. Verse 6, The voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the Spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. All flesh which is people are like grass. With cross-reference to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24-25, to 25, we read, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of men as a flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower thereof falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Many people boast in their accomplishments, but without God, our lives would be like grass that will dry up and flower that will fade and fall away. It is God's spirit and His word that will reveal the moral and spiritual poverty and our need to repent and turn to the Lord. Now verse 9, O Zion that bring up good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem that bring good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. Through Israel, Jesus was born he lived, died, and was resurrected. Through the nation of Israel, good tidings has spread all over the world. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we read, But you shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. For the last 2,000 years or so, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ has touched nations and the people around the globe. Sadly, many Jews have yet to believe and confess Jesus as their Messiah. Yet God has a divine destiny and plan for the Jewish people. There will be a mighty restoration of Israel in the last days. God's heart and will is for the salvation of the Jews. Many will call upon the name of the Lord and will play a significant part in bringing forth the good tidings. Praise God. Now verse 10, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him and His work before Him. When Jesus returns, He will rule and reign as King of Kings like no other earthly powers we have ever known throughout history. He will come with power and might and reward those who love and serve Him. Verse 11, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead them, those that are young, with young. The Lord is our shepherd. It's one of the most beautiful and precious representations of his character and nature. 
many of us knows the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Then in John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. We like the comfort and care from the shepherd. However, there are times he would chasten and discipline the sheep. He protects and defends us from the enemies too. Today and throughout history, many Jews do not recognize Jesus as their Messiah. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that kills the prophet and stone them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her children under her wings, and you will not. Yet during the millennial reign, many in Israel will come to accept him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 40, continuing in verse 12. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. Who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in the measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in the balance. This verse speaks of God's greatness and power. He is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, meaning all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present. That He is the creator and maker of heaven and earth. In spite of all the scientific and technological advancements, the inventions and innovations of humankind, God is still the greatest architect and engineer of the universe. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and all the firmament show His handiwork. We do not worship nature, but we stand in awesome wonder of the beauty and magnificence of God's creation. He can speak things into existence. He can say, Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 13, Who have directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being His counselor, have taught Him. Here the Spirit of the Lord, the third person of the Trinity, is referred to. The Holy Spirit is not just a force or a power, but a member of the Godhead. He played an active part in creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, we read, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved. We need the moving of the Holy Spirit, not only in creation, but our hearts and lives too, to transform us as His new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 14. With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and shewed to him the way of understanding? The question, with whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, is rhetorical. It's like asking, who does God seek advice from? Who can guide and instruct God? As is obvious, none can teach and impart knowledge to God. No one can show God the way of the understanding. God alone is all-knowing and all-wise. Verse 15, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, He takes up the hours as a very little thing. When we look at the nations of the world, we see that some are more powerful or more prosperous than others. Yet no matter how great or how little we think of different countries, the nations are as a drop of bucket and small dust in the hands of God. God is still on the throne. I recognize that there are many problems that we face, economically, socially, and politically. Above all, the greatest problem is moral and spiritual. Because of the disobedience and fall of men, we feel the pain, the suffering around us. Romans chapter 8 verse 22 says, For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. The only solution is the Bible. It's the Word of God that brings light 
to our world. Verse 16, And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Many people are religious. We think that our religious works and activities would please God. Yet in this verse it says, In essence, that the sacrifices and offerings are not enough. There is only one sacrifice God accepts, what Jesus did on the cross. The perfect sinless Lamb of God who shed His precious shed blood as the atoning substitutionary sacrifice for your sins and mine. It's our faith in this finished work that we are cleansed, justified and sanctified before God. Verse 17, All nations before Him are as nothing, and they are counted to Him less than nothing and vanity. We thank God for countries and with good government. We need to pray for our national leaders and officials. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 2 declares, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Yet even with the best of leaders, they cannot solve all the problems of their citizens. All of us are nothing before God. One day, all earthly kingdoms and empires will end at the return of the Lord. We'll all come under His rule and reign. Praise God. Continuing in verse 18, To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto Him? During the days of Isaiah, much of Israel worshipped idols, just like the neighboring countries. Throughout history, idolatry has been a great problem for mankind. In fact, being religious is a form of idolatry when we put our self-effort and good works as a means to please God. Faith in Jesus and His finisher on the cross is the only way to please God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is and He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. God is who He says He is in the Bible, not our own human ideas or imagination of who we think He is. Besides religion, education, entertainment, money, power and sex can also become popular idols in this day and age. Verse 19, The workmen melted a graven image and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast silver chains. Where the graven or carved image Man creates and shapes them to represent God, but this is idolatry. Even our family, our church, our ministry can become idols if we place them above our love for Christ. We need to repent of all forms of idolatry and recognize our spiritual bankruptcy and utter helplessness apart from looking unto Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith according to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Verse 20. He that is so impoverished that he have no oblation, choose a tree that will not rot. He seeks unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Religion is legalistic and ritualistic. There are people who will spare no expense to travel to holy sites or look for so-called holy men or buy some religious objects with the hope that they'll be blessed. Yet outward ceremonies cannot fill the emptiness in the depths of our soul, what we need is a relationship with Jesus Christ. He satisfies us completely, spirit, soul, and body. Listen to this invitation in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 to 3, starting with verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come to me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Through the price Jesus paid at Calvary, we can partake the bread of life and living waters. Praise God. Verse 21, Have you not known, have you not heard, have you not been told from the beginning, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? 
from the foundations of the earth, God reveals Himself to men. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For the invisible things of Him for the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse for saying that God is dead. Instead of turning to the Bible which reveals the true and living God, sadly many look to religion, money, power, and sex. Continuing in verses 21 to 25 of Romans chapter 1, we read, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to become wise, they became fools and chained the glory of the incorrupt, uncorruptible God into an image made to, like to corruptible men and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts and to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creation more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 22, it is he that sits upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretched out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. While the Bible is not a scientific textbook, it is so accurate here. The circle of the earth reveals that the earth is round, a globe. Well, I know that the earth is not a perfect, perfectly round, but until the last few centuries, many people believed that it was flat. The heavens as a curtain is likened to the ozone layer in the atmosphere, protecting us from harmful rays to reach us. And I'm not going to talk about climate change and environmental issues here. Though we are the inhabitants on earth as grasshoppers before God, yet He sustains our life through the air that we breathe, the plants and animals that we have for food, and the rain that falls on lakes, rivers, and reservoirs to supply us water. Verse 23, That bringeth the princes to nothing, he makes the judge, judges of the earth as vanity. No matter how powerful or famous, when our life on earth ends, these positions are nothing before God. Verse 24, Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. This verse continues the idea that whatever we plant and build on earth can be destroyed one day. Only that which we do for His glory and eternal value will last. Verse 25, To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, said the Holy One. This verse in the form of a question is almost like verse 18 which asks, to whom then will you liken God and what likeness will you compare to Him? Now in the Bible, what may appear repetitive is not redundant. If something's important, something paramount, we must take heed. Let God be God. He is the Holy One. There's no one who can compare with Him. No man, no idol can be likened to Him. Verse 26, lift up your eyes on high and behold, we have created these things and bring a out their host by numbers, he calleth them by name, by the greatness of his might, for he is strong in power, not one fails. When we look up to the heavens and see the stars, how can anyone deny the existence of a Creator God? We perceive the number of stars as countless, even astronomers could only estimate, yet God knows the exact number and even calls each of them by name. The universe reveals the greatness of God. Verse 27, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaks, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Israel feels that are hidden and passed over from the Lord. Sometimes you try to hide things from the Lord, which is impossible. At other times it seems that God hides himself from us. But we need to ask ourselves, have we departed from His way? Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither His ear heavy that it cannot hear. 
but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. We cannot blame and fault God. We need to repent, return, and walk in this way. The next few verses, verses 28 until verse 31, the end of this chapter having some of my favorite verses when I was a youth. Starting with verse 28. Have thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. This verse affirmed that God is interested in our lives. He's interested in us. He does not hide from us except when we sin. He does not faint or grow weary. His way is unsearchable and incomprehensible at times, but we must trust Him. Verse 29, He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increased strength. In serving the Lord, we feel weary and heavy laden at times. We need His strength and refreshing. In Matthew chapter 11, verse, verses 28 to 30, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 to 10, For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Verse 30, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Even youths will faint and be weary. Whether we are young or old, it's not in our own natural strength and willpower that we depend on, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I'm reminded by Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 31, the last verse of this chapter, Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. It is said that when eagles are no longer young, their wings can rise and mount up with youthful appearance. For us, we are to be in essence like spiritual eagles, to seek the Lord's space and wait upon Him with our going forward to serve Him. In a world with many instant products, waiting does not seem normal. People want things fast. However, in spiritual life, there are no shortcuts. We need to take time to develop a strong prayer life and the study of God's Word. Our foundation is in Christ and what He did on the cross. Praise God. Hallelujah. my soul for you, O oh God, you are my thirst, in the wilderness I pour out my soul, in the flesh and my heart fail, but you are the strength of my heart. and my heart fail but you are the strength